it's art, it's art, it's art, it's art, it's art, it's time for art! Hi everybody, my name is Miss Howell and I am an art teacher with Houston ISD and you and I are going to get to spend the next 30 minutes or so together making art and learning about art. Let's get started. First things first, I'm going to do art with some materials that you might not have at your house. And you know what? That's okay. You can do the best you can with whatever you have, or you can just watch and then later, if you get some of the materials, maybe you'll remember what we did together. Either way, I hope you have a good time and you learn something about art. Second thing second, this lesson is made for pre-K through second grade, but really anybody can do it. Anybody who's young at heart or a lifelong learner or who loves art will be able to participate and have a good time. Today we will be using toilet paper tubes or paper towel tubes. You might want a marker. You need scissors. I'm using some air dry clay, also known as model magic, if you go to the store. And I've got some glue. You also could use Play-Doh or modeling clay or really any kind of clay that you have laying around. You may also want some paper. And really any kind of paper will work, whether it's white paper or it has lines or even construction paper. Go get your stuff, go get your stuff, go get your stuff. Go get your stuff, go get your stuff, go get your stuff. Hi everybody. I'm glad to see you again. I hope you had a good week since the last time we visited together. We are going to have some fun today. Can you guess what we're going to be talking about today? Can you guess what these might be? Yes, today is all about cats and making sculptures. Sculptures are three dimensional. So instead of flat on a piece of paper today, we're going to make paper stand up and we're going to make sculptures. We're going to make things that stand up on their own and take up space, not just long and tall, but also deep. It's going to be fun. Let's go. Before we start our sculptures, let's learn some things about kitties that we might need to know to make our sculptures look right. Baby cats are called kittens. Cats are mammals. That means they have fur on the outside of their body. They have four legs and they have a pretty long tail that helps them when they're jumping from one place to the next. Cats have long whiskers, and a lot of their whiskers come right off of their cheeks, but they also have some on the sides of their faces and up by their eyebrows. And whiskers help cats feel around in the darkness. Cats and kittens sleep a lot during the day. Actually, they sleep a lot. They sleep for about 18 hours out of a day, which is 24 hours. So that's most of the time. But when they're out running around, they're usually out at nighttime. That makes them nocturnal. Kitties especially like to sleep curled up like this with their paws underneath them and their tails kind of tucked around them almost like a little furry blanket. Cats and kittens love to play with things. And most of the time, the way they play is kind of like practicing to be hunters. Cats started hanging out with people way at the beginning of when there were people. And that's because people left trash around. Back then, it wasn't candy wrappers. Back then, it was little bits of animals that they had eaten and bones and things. And so mice and rats started hanging out, eating all the extra trash that was laying around. Well, pretty quick, the cats came to eat the rats and the mice that were around. 
So cats and people have been living together for a long, long time. The first time they started living in people's houses was actually about 4,000 years ago in Egypt. And you can tell because there's a lot of artwork that starts happening, little statues and things that start happening in Egypt around 4,000 years ago. In fact, the Egyptians worshipped a bunch of different gods and one of them was named Bastet and she was part cat. People have really liked having cats around for a long time because they kill off the mice and the rats from the crops that we're trying to grow or from our houses, those kinds of things. And so lots of people have made cats part of their artwork. Sometimes it's jewelry, like this bracelet. Sometimes it's statues or little figurines to have kind of sitting around the house reminding you of a special cat. Sometimes it's paintings or artwork. I wanna introduce you to my kitties. I have two kitties two kitties that live at my house with my two dogs and my turtle and my tarantula and my family, my humans. So this is Mean Kitty. We call her Mean Kitty because she's kind of grouchy. She doesn't love people petting her all the time. She does not like to be picked up or held. She doesn't, she doesn't like the dogs being around her very much. So she's sitting inside of her little bucket on her little kitty tower because that's where she's almost always sitting because she's just grouchy and she doesn't want to be around the rest of us. But we love her anyway. This is Cirrus. And Cirrus is like the opposite of mean kitty. Cirrus likes to be held. He's always following us around and talking to him. He likes to sleep right next to the dogs. He likes to play a lot. He's a pretty funny boy. Let's work on our first statue. You're going to need a toilet paper tube and some paper. And remember, it doesn't matter what kind of paper, but some paper. You're also going to need your scissors, and this would be a great time for a glue stick, or you can use your crafting glue or your liquid glue. So I took my piece of paper, and I just folded it in half. Okay? And then I'm going to cut that half of a piece of paper off because that's just a little bit bigger than my toilet paper tube. You see? Now what I'm going to do is line up my toilet paper tube on the edge of the paper so that there's a little extra hanging off down here, and I'm going to glue it all the way on. Watch. I'm going to roll it up as I go. So now I'm kind of gluing the paper onto the paper, but that's okay because the toilet paper roll is underneath. I'm going to smooth it down. Make sure the glue gets squished out on there. And then this side is where the extra paper is. I'm just going to tuck that up inside of the toilet paper roll. Okay, time to make this roll look a little bit like a kitty. So you see how I have this line right here with the paper, that's where the edge is. I want to make sure that that's on the side of my toilet paper roll. So what I'm going to do, you have to use strong thumbs for this. I'm going to hold my paper, my toilet paper tube, like this, and I'm gonna push with my thumbs until it goes down. So let me show you again, maybe different angle. I'm gonna push with my thumbs 
until it kind of caves in like that. See that? Kind of caved in. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Urgh, strong thumbs. Strong thumbs. Look at that. What do you think these two things could be on our kitty? They're part of our kitty. What do you think they could be? Oh, could they be ears? I think they can be ears. Now I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to make a cute little kitty face. So these are kitty ears. So I'm going to go like this and like this because that's the outside of the kitty's ears. And I'm going to make a cute kitty face. Kitties have two eyes, one eye, two eyes. They have a little triangle nose. And then their mouth and their cheeks kind of come like this. That's a smiley kitty. They have one, two, three. They have a bunch of whiskers, but I'm making three because my marker's really fat. If you have a skinny marker or a pencil, you can make a lot more than that. Do I want to put a collar on my kitty? A collar would help my kitty so that someone would know that he belonged to somebody. So I could put a collar all the way around my kitty's head. And if I wanted to, I could put a little bell on the collar or a little tag that has my kitty's address on it so somebody could bring him home. And then what about kitty paws? Kitties have two paws in the front, one paw, and their little paws have little, little toes. Two paws. And then let's roll it over and on the back, let's make his kitty tail. Kitties have tails that wiggle a lot. They can do all kinds of things with their tails. And then his legs, his back legs are going to go on the side and we're going to make it like this. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. That kind of looks like a bee. All right. There's one kitty statue. Now, if you wanted to, you could color your kitty. You could make your kitty all different colors. Kitties come in lots of different colors. They have spots, they have stripes, they have all kinds of things. So you could make your kitty whatever color you want. You could make a whole row of kitties. This would look super cute sitting in a windowsill with a whole bunch of kitties all lined up next to each other. Wouldn't that be cute? So cute. Okay, finish up your kitty. While you're finishing your kitty, I'm going to tell you a story. This story is called The Tale of Tom Kitten, and it is written by Beatrix Potter, who you might know is the author of Peter Rabbit. Maybe you saw that movie or you've read those books before. So Beatrix Potter wrote a bunch of books about little creatures that live in the garden. She's from England. So she wrote about bunnies and kitties and toads and ducks and all kinds of things. And she wrote in 1907. That was more than a hundred years ago, but I think you're still going to like this story. Okay, here we go. Once upon a time, there were three little kittens and their names were Mittens Tom Kitten and Moppet. They had dear little fur coats of their own and they tumbled about the doorstep and played in the dust. But one day their mother, Mrs. Tabitha Twitchit, expected friends to tea. So she fetched the kitten indoors to wash and dress them before the fine company arrived. So in England and lots of other places around the world, you have tea around three o'clock or so, and you have tea and you have little snacks to hold you over until dinner. And sometimes people come visit and sometimes it's really fancy. First, she scrubbed their faces. This one is Moppet. Then she brushed their fur. This one is Mittens. Then she combed their tails and whiskers. This is Tom Kitten. Tom was very naughty, and he scratched his mother. Mrs. Tabitha dressed Moppet and Mittens in clean pinafores. 
kind of like dresses, like aprons that go in front of your dresses and tuckers that go around their necks. And then she took all sorts of elegant, uncomfortable clothes out of a chest of drawers in order to dress up her son, Thomas. Tom Kitten was very fat and he had grown. Several buttons burst off. His mother sewed them on again. When the three kittens were ready, Mrs. Tabitha unwisely turned them out into the garden bum, 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 to be out of the way while she made hot buttered toast for tea. Now, keep your clothing clean, children. You must walk on your hind legs. Keep away from the dirt and from Sally Henny Penny and from the pigsty and from the puddle ducks. What do you think? Are they going to keep their clothing clean? Have you ever been dressed up in clean clothes and told to stay clean? It's pretty hard. Moppet and Mittens walked down the garden path unsteadily. It's hard to be a kitten wearing a dress. Presently, they stood upon their pinafores and fell on their noses. When they stood up, there were several green grass stains. Let us climb up the rocks and sit on the garden wall, said Moppet. They turned their pinafores around backwards and went up with a skip and a jump. Moppet's white tucker fell down into the road. Tom Kitten was quite unable to jump when walking upon his hind legs in trousers. It must be really hard to be a kitten in pants. He came up the rockery by degrees, breaking the ferns and shedding buttons right and left. He was all in pieces when he reached the top of the wall. Moppet and Mittens tried to pull him together, but his hat fell off and the rest of his buttons burst. <clears throat> While they were having difficulties, there was a pit, pat, paddle, pat, and three puddle ducks <gasps> came along the hard high road, marching one behind the other and doing the goose step. Pit, pat, paddle, pat, pit, pat, waddle, pat. They stopped and stood in a row and stared up at the kittens. They had very small eyes and looked surprised. <clears throat> Then the two duck birds, Rebecca and Jemima Puddle Duck, picked up the hat and tucker and put them on. Mittens laughed so hard that she fell off the wall. Moppet and Tom descended after her. The pinafores and all the rest of Tom's clothes came off on the way down. Come, Mr. Drake Puddle Duck, said Moppet. Come and help us to dress him. Come and button up Tom. But... Mr. Drake Puddle Duck advanced in a slow, sideways manner and picked up the various articles of clothing. But he put them on himself! They fit him even worse than Tom Kitten. It's a very fine morning, said Mr. Drake Puddle Duck. <laughs> he looks very silly. And he and Jemima and Rebecca Puddle Duck set off up the road, keeping step. Pit, pat, paddle, pat, pit, pat, waddle, pat. And then, uh-oh, Mrs. Tabitha Twitchit, the mom, came down the garden and found her kittens on the wall with no clothes on. She pulled them off the wall and took them back to the house. My friends will arrive in a minute, and you are not fit to be seen. I am affronted. That means she's upset, said Mrs. Tabitha Twitchit. She sent them upstairs, and I am sorry to say that she told her friends that they were in bed with the measles, which was not at all true. Uh-oh, are they in bed? Are they behaving themselves? I don't think Tom Kitten was the only naughty kitten. I think all three of those kittens are a little bit naughty. Quite the contrary. They were not in bed, not in the least. Somehow there were very extraordinary noises overhead, which disturbed the dignity and repose of the tea party. That means they were having a hard time being fancy. And I think that someday I shall have to make another larger book to tell you more all about Tom Kitten. As for the puddle ducks, they went into a pond. The clothes all came off directly because there were no buttons. 
and Mr. Drake Puddle Duck and Jemima and Rebecca have been looking for them ever since. That poor mommy kitty, she was working so hard. The end. I love kittens. They're so cute. They get in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. All the time. You have to be very careful with kittens because they can sometimes do things they don't even know how much trouble they're getting into sometimes. So now we're going to make another kind of sculpture, this time using our clay. We're going to use this to inspire our next sculpture. So this is a kitty that is a pot. It was made in Cambodia, which is a country, and it is made out of the lime, which is a kind of a stone, like kind of a mineral that they can put together to make into clay to make into pottery. And this is the front of the kitty, and this is the back of the kitty. You can see his tail is there. I'm using my foamy air dry clay, which is kind of like model magic, but you can use whichever clay you like. It just might take a little more work for your little hands if your clay is thicker than mine. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just kneading, kneading, kind of like bread dough or something like that, where what I'm doing is I'm just working it back and forth and just kind of squishing it around. Partly because it's fun to play with, also because I want to kind of work it and get some of the moisture out and kind of wake it up a little bit. All right. Now we're going to practice doing some things that we can do with clay. One, let's roll a ball with our clay. You can roll a ball with your clay. I'm rolling in between my hands and like my hand kind of makes a circle shape, right? And so that's helping make kind of a circle shape and it makes it a little bit smooth on the outside and I can kind of tap, 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 tap and get it even more circular. Circle, circle, circle. Is this a circle actually, Miss Howell? No, this is a sphere. Can you say sphere? So a circle would be a flat circle that I draw on the paper, but this has dimensions. This is three dimensional. This is not a shape. This is a form. This is a sphere. This is a sphere. Now from a sphere, I can make a coil. I can make a coil. I can roll the clay in between my fingers or I can roll the clay on the table to make it into a long skinny. Sometimes people might say that's a snake, right? I can roll it long and skinny, but if I want to, I could make it into a spiral and I could make it into a coil like this and look pretty quick. It starts to be taller, right? I could build a bunch of coils on top of each other, right? To be able to make, I don't know, a pot or something, right? Okay, so let's see. Another thing we can do with clay is we can pinch it. We can pinch the clay. So if I make a ball again, I can pinch the clay off, right? I can pinch it. And look, that kind of looks like a kitty ear, doesn't it? I think it does. And then I could poke it to make little kitty eyes, right? And then I could keep making a little kitty face with it like that, couldn't I? And that would be a statue, right? That would be kind of a statue. It's not flat like a painting. It's like a statue. So I could make a kitty face. Another thing I can do that's pretty fun is to make a bowl kind of like that kitty picture that I just showed you, right? Like that lime pot from Cambodia. So what they did was they made a ball. Okay. And then you poke your thumb down into the middle, not all the way through. See how I didn't, can I see my thumb in the bottom? No, because it's in there, but it's not all the way through. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push my thumb and my finger together and kind of turn it around and look what starts to happen. My 
look, it starts to make a little bowl, right? Kind of like a little pot. This is called a pinch pot. And if you're using very thick clay, it's a lot harder than um, it looks when I'm doing it. When I'm doing this is very easy clay to work with, right? And so with this clay, I can make the walls very skinny and very tall, kind of like our pot was. Right, and then I could round it over to make it into a pot, kind of like this. And then just like that little Cambodian lime pot, I could wait until it dries. The nice thing about Model Magic or this air dry foamy clay is that once it dries, you can color on it with markers. So I could let my pot dry and then I could draw a face on and then on the back side, I could draw the tail on just like that little Cambodian pot. Okay, another thing I could do is I could make a ball and take a little piece off here, put that off to the side. Then I could make a pinch pot um, not all the way through, just down in the middle. Pinch, 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 pinch. And I could make that pot as big as I want to. I can even make sure that it sits the way I want it to by kind of squishing it down onto the table, making sure it sits the right way. And then I could build a body for my pot. So look, if that's the kitty's body, let's see if I could make a face for my kitty. Kitty face round. Kitty ear. Kitty ear. Kitty ear. Oh. Can kind of squish it if I need to here. Kitty face. It's a pretty good kitty face. Okay, so my kitty face could go right here on the front part. And then what would go back here? If the kitty's face is here, what goes on the back of a kitty? A tail. So look, I would make a coil. And kitty tails don't come to a point like that, so I would kind of squish down the point. And then I could make it a long, crazy tail and just attach it to the back. I might have to work a little bit because that tail might fall over. See, it's falling. Blech. But that's okay. If I don't want it to fall, I could prop it up against something. Like, here's my other kitty statue. If I prop it like that, when it dries, it'll stay straight up and down. Or I might let it fall so it's kind of over like a kitty tail. Kitty tails move around a lot. In lots of cultures, cats are thought to bring good luck. So I have this little guy. He's called a Maneki Neko, and he is a Japanese fortune cat, and he sits around my house to bring me good luck. So now I have a sleepy cat to add to my windowsill, and I have a pinch pot cat to add to my windowsill. I made this crazy cat out of a toilet paper tube. It has mean kitty's face. I have this kitty statue to add, and I also have this guy, and would you believe it? I made this guy out of toilet paper clay. All I did was grab a bunch of toilet paper, get it wet, squish it really, really well in the sink so that the water, most of the water comes out, and then I made a ball, kind of like a snowman, and I made another ball like a snowman, and I pinched his ears. And then I made a coil for his tail and then I glued him all together after he dried and it took a long time for him to dry. Anyway, now I have a toilet paper clay kitty to add to my good luck kitty fortune collection. And now hopefully you do too. I can't wait to see you next week. I hope you have a great week. Bye everybody.